welcome back. You're watching DXB today. And as I'd mentioned at the top of the show, there's a focus on all things homegrown. And I will tell you exactly why by introducing our next guest. Now, he is a rising star in Bollywood, creating a name for himself with his charismatic presence and versatile acting skills. A homegrown talent making it big in the film industry. Please welcome to DXB today, Taha Shah Badusha, or Thank Tajdar, you. should I call you? Call me Tajdar. My dad calls me Tajdar now, so please, you guys can call me Listen, Tajdar. Listen, we all wanted to see you in your mustache. Where's your mustache? Flew away. <laughs> Flew away. Now, I mean, my, my, my mother said that if you stick on with the mustache too long, then people might just start recognizing you with just that. So it's better that you that you shift around your look so that everybody can start recognizing you in different looks. Plus, I think I look decent. Yeah, you look, you look uh, more... Maitha, what do you think? You do. All right, thank more you. Maitha said yes. I, 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 I miss like the mustache, thing, personally. Yeah. But yeah. You personally like the mustache? Yeah, I personally like the mustache. I'll, do, I'll go back to it just for you, my friend. Thank Daha, thank you. when you came into our studio, everyone was swarming around you. I'm not just talking Indians. I mean, people from all parts of the world because of your hit Netflix TV show, Hira Mandi, in which you play this foreign educated boy who comes from an elite family, but who's also part of the resistance movement against the British colonialism. How did that character come about and how did you connect with your role? The, the, I mean, I, I really chased this audition down, to be very honest. I, I chased an audition down for 15 months and uh, we got uh, a three-day role. So I was first signed on for a three-day role and then Mr. Fansali was kind enough to increase my role to another character called Balraj. Mm -hmm. And uh, I was going to sign on to that character until I get a call from him and he, he they, they, they said he changed his mind and I'm like, oh, I'm gonna lose out on this. But when I go up to him, he basically shocks me by telling me that he wants me for the lead character of Tajdar. And um, the rest is history, of course. So I never expected to get it, but this has been completely shocking, unpredictable, and uh, just it's just so humbling for such a great man to see something in me to give me this chance. And I feel I, I, feel I resonate with the character very much. Um, I'm a lover boy myself. <laughs> um, I, I feel that I have grown up as a kid over here in Abu Dhabi, and um, you know, I, and I've always been a big fan of Bollywood, and uh, I understand the emotions, and I think that all of us, you know, our cultures uh, have a lot of similarities, yes, true. and uh, that's what makes us, you know, a great bond over here, you mm. know, for both of us, and I, I believe that. Tajdar is somebody, like you said, internationally educated, of course, from London. But I think he believes in. I'm a, I'm a, you know, I've been raised by a single mom most of my life, so I understand the plight of women. I understand the struggles they go through, which is much more than us men, by the way, True. right? And it's facts. Uh, it's facts. It's facts. <laughs> Every day, Fair enough. They, these women, um, you know, they, they they struggle and they want to prove themselves, and they do so much better than what we can ever do. Yeah. So I understand where he, you know where Tajdar comes from because of my upbringing. I also feel that our country in, in India is the only country where the national anthem is played every single time before the movie. In no other wow. country that, yeah. that, that happens. So all of us have a patriotic bug mm -hmm. inside of us and we want to give back to our society. And um, I think that's what actually we relate to. So I wanted to ask you a little more about maybe your, well, two things. One, your time here in the UAE. Obviously, you're born, as you said, born in Abu Dhabi, which yes. is why we're selfishly saying homegrown. Yes. We're claiming you. Like, My, like family. <laughs> My family. My <laughs> family. And then you also went to school uh, in, in Sharjah, I think, right? The yes, I was in uh, uh, Sharfat, Sharjah. And um, I was a very naughty kid. <laughs> I have to accept that. Um, That's why you're a performer today, right? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly why, because nobody else would give me a job. <laughs> But uh, I am definitely homegrown, yes. And then one something I also wanted to mention. So we see a lot of Bollywood coming to film here in Dubai. Uh, obviously, you're committed to season two now. Um, but what's the likelihood of having you come and make a big project here? I, I think that's a dream of mine, you know, especially with the increasingly changing landscape of UAE. <coughs> like every time I come here, there's so many new things I can't recognize. I can't figure out my ways around, right? And um, like I said, I was grown up. I grew up in Abu Dhabi for about seven, eight years, and then the rest of my uh, growing up years, I was in Sharjah, and then I keep traveling to Dubai. And with Dubai, um, every day there's something new happening, you know. Mm -hmm. And 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 like you said, it's a dream of mine to come and create a project, not just for either Dubai or Abu Dhabi, but for the UAE in general. And I think that I actually pitched this project to uh, some of my friends here, 
about making a project, about how UAE was formed. You know, in that we have diversity. Yes. We have Arabs, we have Britishers, we've got Indians, we've got Iranians, right? So how about we make something for everybody? A global mm. platform like Netflix would love to do something like this. I think that is where I come from. I want to, I wanna, now, you know, UAE has given me so much. My formative years have been over here, right? All my experiences, especially because this is a, you know, this is like the melting pot. And some people call this the, 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 um, the apple of, mm -hmm. uh, you, know, you know what I mean? So sure. I feel that it's, it's, it's my obligation and um, to give back to the society. So I'm definitely going to come back and create a massive project, hopefully with the help of all of you. Please do, let's talk. Yes. <laughs> and, talk. Th and talking about projects, you've worked with so many people and in this specific film, you've worked with Sanjay Leela Bin Sali, one of the best directors of Bollywood and Farida Jalal who's a renowned actress and we've loved her in so many things from Kabi Khushi Kabi Ram, I think Kalho Naho as well and everything. I love all that makeup. Yeah. I love that you're saying these names even. Yeah, 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 <laughs> you're right? a big fan of Bollywood, yeah. right? I'm a huge fan, a of, fan Bollywood, of Bollywood. How was it working with those legends? Um, I, you know, I, people say that when you're on set, uh, were you nervous? Um, <laughs> but I've gotten so much love. You know, when you actually meet them in person, you understand that they're just human. Yes. Right, and they are people who have sustained a lot of obstacles in their life. Right, so you, they're institutions in themselves. And somebody like, let's talk about Farida, ma'am. Mm -hmm. She literally became like my grandma. All right, she started taking care of me on set. Mm -hmm. Right, she would uh, anytime. I mean, especially that part where I have to go and sit on her lap. Yes. You know, <laughs> I was I was trying not to put too much weight on her, <laughs> but she's like, come sit. You know, and she would grab me and she, you know, she would give me a peck on my cheek and uh, truly it was for somebody as a, you know, who was an outsider, who was very, just, I was nervous, you know, because I didn't want to step on anybody's, you know, shoes, I didn't want to hurt anybody's feelings, but she was so inclusive, right? After working for 50, 60 years, right? yeah. that's a long time, right? She used to tell us stories about how she used to work in the industry when there was no vanity vans, there was no ACs. There was, uh, you know, there was no sync sound. You know, so many things have changed. So many experiences and we are so privileged today. We are so privileged that uh, we kind of take it for granted. You know, when you stay with these legendary artists, you, you come to reality, you have like a reality check that, you know, you have to be grateful for where you are, where I am today, yeah. you know, in the midst of all you people right here. <laughs> right. You know, we have to be grateful. Speaking of gratitude, Taha, uh, you were recently at the Cannes Film Festival. I mean, what an experience. Plus, ever since you've been in Dubai, I think all of the last two days, I've seen you on everyone's reels and TikToks. People are stopping you and filming content with you. I mean, you mentioned a little bit earlier on that you were about to get a character role on the show, but you ended up bagging the role of the main character, almost an overnight stardom of sorts. How has life been for you since? Um, you know, people call this an overnight stardom, but I, I feel that um, it's been 15 years, and it's a. Uh, You've been working very hard. Yeah, to I, get to this point. I mean, I mean, I feel everybody works hard, yeah. you know. But there are certain things in the universe that you can't control. All we can control is the efforts that we put in on a daily basis, you know. Since you know, and that's what I've tried to do, and the blessings of my mother, yeah. right? Because I'm telling you, whatever I've achieved today, 10% might be my efforts, but 90% is my mother's efforts in the, you know, behind me, which, which I don't see the sacrifices that she's done, yeah. um, the, 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 all the, you know, whatever, whatever the whole is, making an actor is not easy, mm -hmm. you know, especially in an industry like Bollywood. You need a team, you need, you know, the right food, the right yeah. nutrition, the right, the right teachers, the right gurus. It's, it's really a task and for somebody to take care of all of that single-handedly, is a woman, mm. right? Is my mother. So a big thank you, I have to say it on TV to her. Um, but yes, um, overnight success, 15 years. How am I feeling? I value this. You know, when I don't have anything and when I didn't have any likes on my, on my social media posts, when I had nobody coming up to me and, and saying my name or the name of the character, um, nobody wanted me. I was written off from the industry. You know. I wanted to ask you as well about the production value because the production value is massive. Insane. How was it for anyone that's out there that doesn't know what goes into this? How was it being there, witnessing all of this, 
firsthand. Can you tell us more about that? The first experience? day that I saw the set, I was completely taken aback. Right, every character's every character's house, every yeah. character's chair, their table, you know, all the props was different for each character. It was so well thought of. I mean, it has been 18 years since he's had this in his mind. Yeah. And to put this finally on the big screen for everybody to watch is uh, phenomenal, yes. right? So for me, as a personal experience, I was completely in awe, right? And every day that I was on set, initially, of course, the sets, the costumes, the jewelry, everything was incredible. But the, the most consistent thing that kept me in awe was Mr. Sanjay Leela Bhansali's yeah. work ethic, right? He works only with one camera, by the way. He has wow. no, he doesn't ever puts in two cameras. He only works with one camera. He sees the frame and he sets the frame completely and then only wow. he shoots, right? It doesn't matter the amount of retakes that he has to take. It doesn't matter if How he has to How many retakes have you done? Maximum? Yeah, maximum. Wow, <laughs> um, I would like to say big, a, a big number, but fortunately for me, the, the first few weeks, I think he only gave me about two to three takes. That's because you're that good. Uh, no, no, no. I uh, After that, when I saw that other people were getting more takes, I thought he didn't like me. <laughs> <laughs> Why are they getting more takes? Why am I not getting more takes? Um, but no, he's he's a perfectionist and I, and I'm, you know, like I said, 15 years and 15 courses of acting throughout the globe. Yeah. I, I just wanted to give him my best. And I think that he saw something and therefore I was able to give that to him. And that's when he um, kind of said cut. But the maximum amount of takes that I've ever done was about I think we've done 23 takes. Wow. Oh, wow. 23 takes, which is, which is really nothing. Yeah. Sure, really nothing. sure. I mean, there, could be worse. people have beaten that, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, Taha, we could sit here and talk about this for a very long time, but I'm afraid we, were we ran out of time. But I just yeah. want to thank you thank once you. again for joining us on today's Thank you very much, Ahmed. Thank you very much, Maitha. Thank and you. And now, Maitha, before you go, though, thank you. before we go, we have something called the XB in 60. So Maitha has a little surprise for you. Is it like a rapid fire round? <laughs> yes. Always, there's always a rapid fire round. <laughs> yes. I love the rapid fire round. Let's go. So don't worry, first of all, it's uh, it's questions about you, so it should be very easy. Okay, all right. All right? So, back. are you ready? I'm, yes, okay. I'll try. Let's put the clock. Three, two, one. If you weren't an actor, what would you be doing? Oh, wow. Um, I don't know anything else, so I guess Uber driver. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> Your first job? Uh, I was into recruitment of labor. Oh. Hmm. Your motto in life and in work? My motto in life is to sweat it out. Nice. <laughs> A hidden talent you have? I can play the guitar. Oh, I want to nice. see that. Uh, any rituals you follow before a big scene? Uh, any rituals? Yes, I. I um, there's a certain yoga position that I go into to connect my breath to my system. Uh, that's a routine yeah. that I follow. Nice. A superpower you wish you had? Mm, read people's minds. I think. Yeah, that's a, something that everyone's Very great. Yeah, we, 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 all, we all want dangerous. that. That's dangerous. That's dangerous power. It's a dangerous one, indeed. Uh, your go-to restaurant in Dubai? Right now, it's Al Sawadi. Oh, nice. Most used app on your phone? Ooh, WhatsApp. I think WhatsApp is the most used app. And then Instagram. And finally, why Dubai? Why Dubai? Or I the mean, UAE as a whole. Or yeah, why UAE kid. Yeah, why UAE? Why UAE? Because uh, UAE has given me everything that I've ever had. You know, UAE is home, and uh, right now, it's time for me to give back to UAE. <laughs> Fantastic yeah. answers. Taha, it's been an absolute pleasure having you on the show, and good luck with everything else that's coming your way, all thank right? You. Thank you, thank you, Aishwarya. Thank you, Emma. Thank you, Omar. Thank you, Maitha. Thank you. Such time now for a quick break. When we come back, there's a stellar performance by April, so make sure you come right back.